Here at Ryan Library, alongside the former president of HBO Sports, Ross Greenberg, we're going to be presenting Perfect in 76 today. Uh, you've done a lot of these documentaries. What made you choose this topic? Well, really, Bob Knight. I mean, I think people had a perception of who he was. They thought he was just the man who throws chairs across basketball courts and just kind of wanted to prove that this team in 1976 was a measurement of what a teammate and a coach are all about, what striving for greatness is all about. and going undefeated for an entire season through the NCAA tournament is quite a chore and a, quite a task and they pulled it off so it's a beautiful story and it uh, really says a lot about human emotion human drama and what it takes to mobilize a team and strive for that kind of perfection I would certainly assume that Bob Knight is one of, be one of the main draws to this movie. Such a polarizing character. What was it like to get to interact with him more and really get to learn uh, about Bob Knight and his, his, himself off the court? Well, it's interesting because you have to break down a wall. He's not fuzzy and you know, he's not going to give you a hug when you see him. Uh, so you have to break through that wall. You have to get to his trust. Uh, and you have to kind of draw on that. And then you have to pull out of him a memory bank of just wonderful, glorious moments, and particularly with this team in 1976. So there's a task at hand. It's not easy, but once you break through, you can get to him because he has so much of a philosophical state of mind. He, you know, a great coach is a philosopher and a motivator. And that's what was so beautiful about this story, was to get into his mindset and what he did to manipulate those players. Throughout the process, is there maybe one moment or quote from uh, Bob Knight that sticks out to you? Well, yeah, right from the beginning of the entire process, he said, look, I just want you to tell one story, and that is that at the beginning of that season, I sat down my players and I said to them, it's not enough to just win the NCAA tournament this year. It's not enough to win the Big Ten championship. It's not enough just to win more of your games than not. We're going to go undefeated. He challenged this team to go undefeated. I mean, what coach does that? And I think from that moment on, I realized this story had another level and another depth to it that, that I had not anticipated. Perhaps uh, there was something that you learned throughout this process that caught you by surprise you weren't expecting to learn. Is there anything that comes to mind that fits that description? I think I knew that he was close with his players, but I didn't realize that players like Quinn Buckner and Scott May felt he was a father and that you know he was always going to be Coach Knight. Here they are in their 60s now, and, and still to this day, he's coach. You know, And that bond that's never going to be broken surprised me um, because you know everyone had assumed that Bob Knight was too cranky to get close to his players but this experience proved to me that there's a bond that'll never be broken between him and his players. And is that the message that you feel maybe ultimately you're trying to get across with this documentary? It's one of the messages is that you know great coaches can teach their professors at heart they're not just basketball minds and I, I think uh, they can teach discipline, they can teach character, and I think uh, that is one of the major messages here. I was thinking about, I've also done Vince Lombardi, I've done you know, the great John Wooden, and I think there's a common thing among all the greats, and that is that they get into the framework and the mindset of their players, and they can achieve great things because they can actually change the way a player thinks and that changes the way they play and then you know at the end of the day all the players will say that he was so much more than a coach I was set for life and I had a life of experience through sports but this man this one man molded me into the kind of man I am today and most are very successful. Well, thank you, Mr. Greenberg. We look forward to watching. That is Perfect in 76. We encourage everyone to check it out. Reporting for NorthAvenueNation.com, I'm Kevin Walsh.